look, before we get on uh, to yourself and, and the weekend's game, I've got to ask you about um, the allegations made against the WRU in media reports this week. The Ospreys came out with a, a pretty strong statement. Just want to get your view on things. Uh, you've read the statement. That's my view. So, you know, that's I'm not going to go anything beyond that. That's our official position, um, and that's my position. You don't want to make any comment on what no. you thought of it as a, an individual. No, no. I, the, the statement reflects what, what we all think about it. So, and as a region, you think that change should happen. Um, I think that we, we have to protect the game's integrity at all costs. Moving on to yourselves, um, clearly a fantastic win last week. Um, I think I can still see a, a shadow of a smile there. You were yeah, yeah, smiling on, yeah. on yeah. Friday night. It's because um, you started off with such a positive topic. Um, no, it's... Um, yeah, obviously, we're, you know, we're, I'm here to talk about the rugby and look, I'm not... Um, walking past the question that you asked me and you know it's a very serious topic that we take very seriously and I just I don't want to get drawn into a, a war of words and, and ultimately we all know what the right thing is and, and what has to be done and um, or you know what the right attitude towards all that sort of inclusivity is what it's all about so from that point of view that's really important um, on to the rugby side of things um, we um, yeah we obviously you know got a great outcome um, in a very tight contest um, and often the emotion in sport is really really important um, and you know it's the emotion that drives you to do things and to keep going and and I thought it was a, a victory as the Montpellier one the week before was that could have gone either way and we found a way to get on the right side of the result um, Will we like it more straightforward? Of course we would, but I'm sure that neutral doesn't, and it means you enjoy it even more, right? And um, from our point of view, you know, we've managed to, despite everyone's probably preconceived ideas about what was going to happen to us in with the group, the opposition we'd been paired against, and uh, we've got ourselves into the knockout stages, and that's a massive testament to everyone concerned, you know, at the Ospreys to get us there. And speaking of the knockout stages, um, Saracens in the cool. next round. Yeah, team. Obviously, I know very well. I mean, they obviously, you know, all but English champions, bar a Freddie Burns drop goal, for example. So look, everyone knows that Saracens are an unbelievably consistent team that play um, a very um, oppressive, uh, difficult game to break down um, with a lot of unbelievably well good world-class players you know at their disposal so it's going to be a really tough ask um, but like just like we've done previously with other rounds we'll go there um, back ourselves to do a job and enjoy the whole journey and see where it takes us uh, plenty of rugby to come before then obviously and uh, a fixture this weekend that if you're not with your feet on the ground uh, you could come unstuck well, I don't think we can afford to have our, not have our feet on the ground. The fact that 15 people have left the building for a start, so it's almost... Um, we talked about three cup finals, actually. Um, we talked about the two European ones and this one for different reasons, but basically as one-off games. Um, and that's a served as well, as boring as it is for people to talk about momentum and bits and pieces. But... Um, you know, I think this is a great opportunity to see, you know, what the next tier of players are capable of. They were they conduct themselves unbelievably well in South Africa in a lot of adversity, even though we didn't get on the right side of the results. Our performances were very, very good and set the foundation for our resurgence, as it were. So from that point of view, the energy that they bring and the excitement that a young group can bring is great. It's going to be probably not as slick as we'd like it, because obviously there's a lot of change, but we're excited to see what happens with that. Uh, speaking of change, you've lost another player to the Wales camp in Scott Baldwin, and obviously great news for him after so long out of the Wales setup. But uh, bad news for, for Derry Lake, who came off on, on crutches at Welford Road. Can you give us any more on on, on Derry? Yeah, well, it looks like a medial ligament strain, so it's fortunately his ACL is intact, so that means it will be. You know, that sort of 
the lesser of evil, as it were, the lesser of two evils. So that's that's good. Um, it will take a, a bit of time to to get that up and running, um, but not as obviously nowhere near as long. So you know, depending on the severity, depending how he reacts, you know, we're hoping to try and get him there or thereabouts towards the end of Six Nations. To be fair, to to have him back up and running for that. So that's what we're looking to do, and hopefully he can respond. He's a young man who shows a lot of commitment to putting himself back together um, and his age does actually make a difference as well so from that point of view yeah hopefully we can get him back up and running um, Scott's involvement obviously has carried the game for us all year and it was great to bring him back to the region and, and, and you know he gets an opportunity which I know that he's very respectful of Dowie as well and his tw Twitter post so from that point of view it shows it's a good reflection that they support each other you know as as we've done in different positions and with different people and, and when people are in and people are out through fault of their own or no fault of their own so it reflects well on 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 everyone that we're, we're doing enough to get people you know even the next lot of people back in you know into the international setup. Uh, one person I'm sure they'll be looking to get back in is Nicky Smith there's some reports emerging that um, obviously with the contract situation that he's the target of quite a few clubs and, and looks set to leave this summer. Well, I mean, we're hopeful that that doesn't happen. Of course, Nicky's very important to us. You know, he's going to captain the side at the weekend. Um, he's, he's in our leadership group. But unfortunately, with the, you know, the catastrophic contractual situation in Wales, we can't, you know, people can't wait forever. So we're hoping that we can make something happen. Obviously, his involvement in Wales would have strengthened that situation. He's not been involved, and our job is to perform well enough to get him back in there. But um, ultimately, players, you know, it's that time of year where the, you know the clock's ticking, and we all want to get on with things. So the sooner we can get on with things, the greater our chances of retaining, you know, an international prop in Wales, and that's important for everybody. Sounds like we've had a, quite an open and honest conversation with each other. We always we're very open and honest about that. I understand it completely. Um, I'm very clear on our intention is to keep Nicky. He's part of the fixtures and furnishings here, as I've talked about, um, and we, we've discussed it. Um, ultimately, the decision will come down to, to our ability to offer a contract and the level of those contracts and where he sits in the Welsh set up because it won't be because he doesn't enjoy the Ospreys for sure because he does he's you know he's him Justin Tipperick you know Adam Beard or you know they're thick as thieves and you know it won't be around what we're doing because we're playing well enough he's enjoying his rugby it comes around certainty and security and, and that's a different a different decision which we have to respect Toby appreciate your time best of luck of the weekend thank you there, there was um, a report at the weekend suggesting up to 15 players could uh, could leave Welsh rugby. Um, 15 major players could leave Welsh rugby um, at the end of the season or between now and the end of the season. Um, is that in line with your expectations? No, not really. Um, I, I can't comment for others. Um, you know, we've talked about Nicky. Um, you know, there's a number of players that you know, are obviously attractive and, and the thing that almost counts against that is, you know, playing for us is playing high level European fixtures and being successful reflects well, but it also puts your players in the shop window. You know, from that point of view and, and why playing for Wales will do the same. So from that point of view that's, you know, almost a victim of the circumstances and of success. So look there's definitely exposure out there and, and good teams want good players. So the sooner we can get, you know, permission and our act together and certainty, we can move and, and secure people remaining in Wales. Until that situation is, is, you know, we've been given the green light to do that, it becomes more problematic and, you know, the chances of people leaving become more, you know, a, a greater factor um, because ultimately players have a short career and they want to know what their future is. How frustrating is it for you, uh, Toby? You know, you're, you're putting together a squad, you've had a great little run year. How frustrating is it for you that you've got these sort of problems, barriers, if you like, um, to settle in your squad? Usually frustrating. Usually, 
difficult because it's an uncontrollable by us. You know, we're doing, we've got a program that produces international rugby players, and and you know we're we're moving on nicely. And you know, in my third year here, we're building things and getting keys and getting young players through. So, you know, on face value, everything's moving in the right direction. You know, we're being more competitive, scoring more try. All those things are great, but ultimately, you can only do it if you've got the squad to do it. And the worrying thing for us all is, you know, what sort of squad are you going to end up with? And the greater the time frame um, in order to secure that situation, the more difficult it becomes. I understand the game has to be sustainable. I'm not saying that it doesn't. I do understand that, and, and I'm very respectful of that. But we just want some certainty to know what we've got. And, you know, we can cut our cloth accordingly. Um, and then expectation off that follows. But... Yeah, we want to make sure that you know all the stuff that we're doing maintains the momentum, and want to be able to control our controllables more. Are you expecting to be without twenty odd players this week? Uh, and what, what? Sorry, I don't understand your question. Uh, well, you, you, you've got fifteen away with Wales. Yeah, and then I, I'm assuming. You, you, you've got at least a handful on the injury list. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, from my point of view, Steve Myler's back in training, which is good. Um, so it's good to see him. Um, you know, the, the long-term injury still there. Will Griff, you know, he, he'll be back when he's back. Dowie Lake, you know about. Um, just thinking, was it? Dan Evans, you know about. that He's not around. Dan, uh, Dan Lydia should, and Owen Watkin. Owen Watkin ran around today, which was good. Uh, Dan Lydia's not trained yet, so he's still some way off. So yeah, no, we've got what we've got. I think we've got we've we've got the obviously some youngsters some youngsters involved this week and and into training. And you know, at the moment we've got like twenty six people training. Uh, and with Owen, he's he's obviously training again. Did he say he's trained or? He's no, he trained running? today. Yeah, he trained today. All oh, right. So so is he in contention to play this weekend? No, no, that's his no. first training session. He's got no. No fitness base to come off. We just we'd like to get them out there and involved in parts of the session just to you know feel part of it and it, it also psychologically helps players you know to realise that they're close and bits and pieces like that and and you also see how they they respond to the you know the little bits and you build that up over a few weeks and then we're hoping that he can play a part against Munster. All oh, right. So yeah, we we were asking uh, Morgan Morgan Morris this you know about Reese Henry. Yeah. Oh, the impact he made on and off the pitch last week. Um, you, must, you must have been pleased with his effort. I mean, I 15 minutes left. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the oldest looking young bloke you're ever likely to meet, right? So, no, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a real character in the dressing room. He's a real character on and off the pitch. He's part of the new Ospreys, really, that little group. Um, of players, Morgan Morris, you know, uh, Will Griff, um, Dowie Lake, Joe Hawkin, Jack Morgan, Reese Davis, you know, that that's the core of the Ospreys going forward. You know, that's the new Ospreys core there. And he's part of that. And obviously being a prop, often sometimes your progression into first team rugby is a bit slower because of the physical suitability and experience you acquire. Um, you know, Duncan Jones has done an unbelievably good job with him, you know, and, and like all props, you're not always going to get it all your own way and you know South Africa's good for him from a learning point of view getting people out to play Swansea against older men and bits and pieces all part of that apprenticeship and look he came to a situation where you know he was in an extreme pressurised situation he delivered in the last five ten minutes of that game so from that point of view he should take a lot of confidence from that and carry on that as part of his progression to becoming you know the prop that he can be so yeah really delighted for him and as I said he brings a lot off the pitch as well which is great is he a loose head or a tight head, or what was his preferred position? He's a tight head, uh, from which obviously is great. But the fact that he can play to a high level at loose head, and we did that when previously when he came on for uh, in a game at Glasgow away uh, the year before, and basically played the house down at loose head, and you know really you know got thrown in at the deep end. So having people that can play both sides to a high level, you know, look at Paul Jones for example is a great, another great example. Is uh, the people that can pinch hit that um, really really helps you out. And you know we've invested a lot of time into young props. You look at Ben Warren himself, Garen Phillips. You know we want to, we're we're looking to progress. You know and get strength in depth for our youth system as as you know and you often ask me about. Yeah, yeah, and at 24, he's still young, isn't he, for a prop? Yeah, he, he looks it. 
Yeah, no, he looks every. every <laughs> no, he is, no, he is. He's a he's a great guy, and um, and um, yeah, we enjoy having him around, and you know, he's, and he's getting better and better, which is great. Don't want to alert uh, Warren to to more of your players, but you know, while Morgan Morris, yeah, yet again made an impact. Nicky too, Michael Collins, mm. um, also had a good game. He had that crucial tackle, and yeah. he seemed to organise things really well. Yeah, Mikey's been great leadership wise. Um, he's playing, he's playing very well, you know, in the last uh, in the last few weeks as well. And yeah, he's he's a guy that often goes unseen a little bit in some of the stuff that goes on. And you know, you get some high visibility moments. But he's he's brilliant as a leader, brilliant for understanding it. And and the boys really enjoy him around around it, you know. And he and he provides some crucial, the more crucial moments. You know, for us in in all of this European campaign, to be fair, and the derby, so he's you know he's in good form, um, and that's great for him. Um, and as you say, sometimes it's the 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 not pretty stuff that you know backs don't get associated. You saw that, and you know Keelan Giles did the same on you know on the on the wing. You know, held up a a potential try and bits and pieces, and it's just a reflection on on our our ability to keep competing and fighting and and. That that's really encouraging, and as you say, Mikey Mikey Collins set the tone on that, which was lovely. Now with Ethan Roots, is is he near fitness, or has he still got some some more time on the sidelines? Yeah, he's probably got another week. To be fair, he's probably got another week to go, but he's not too far away. He's an important player as well. He offers you something different, perhaps. Yeah, something different, but also when you contribute so many players to Wales, you know your back five of your scrum is is basically decimated. You know, for, so the more strength in depth, the more experience you've got. You know, even if it is to, uh, you know, where people like Brad Davis are vital. You know, Ethan as as a more experienced player, even even Morgan Morris. You know, who's got a number of games under his belt. The youngsters that you put around them will look to them for leadership, so they can lead people like Tristan Davis, Harry Deves around, because that you know they've been out there more often. And last question, really, what what are you expecting from the Zebra this weekend? Well, I think that they're a team that basically like to play um, in the right areas of pitch. They can be a little bit unpredictable. Um, I know Dave Williams, the coach from my time at London Irish and at Bath there, so I know what Dave's about. Um, yeah, and look, they're at home. Um, they'll see an opportunity, no doubt, because of the unavailabilities that we have. Um, and it'll be an interesting... I think it's going to be a really interesting contest, I think, because um, you know they'll be buoyed by the fact that they think it's an opportunity. They're at home, and, and obviously they've not had the greatest season that, that they would have, have wanted. And we see it as an opportunity to... You know, see where our next crop of players are. Um, keep expressing ourselves and keep the momentum in our season, um, because we want to be in those playoffs that come at the end of the URC. So for us, there's you know there's quite a lot riding on it too.